So, welcome back to the baker. Grab your baker and the pen if you're choosing, and let's get to making the recipe. So, we're gonna start with taking our unit interval I, which we can think of as just a line, two points, namely zero and one. Doesn't matter what the points are in the middle. Um, doesn't matter what the points in the middle, um, so long as we just have it. And what we're gonna first do is we're going to quotient it by the points um, or with the equivalence relation that zero is identified with one. So zero identified with one. And this gives us a one sphere, S1. It gives us this simple circle. Now, not the space inside the circle, but the line itself of um, points equidistant from a center, but the center is not quite defined yet. It's just, um, it's just a circular sort of shape or anything homeomorphic to a circular shape. Okay, so what we want to do next is construct a disk from this circle by taking into consideration the interior of the space. So recall that the interior of a space, the space X, are all points small x inside x um, that are in that are enclosed by x such that um, uh, such that x is not inside the boundary of x, which is x itself. Okay, so that's an informal definition. But if we think of it in terms of the circle, the interior of the circle is all points inside here. So that's sort of the open disk or the open one ball. So I'm going to take the interior of S1. And to make the actual disk, what we're going to do is union it with S1 itself. So we can visualize it like this. So I have a dotted circle and then all points like that inside there. And I'm going to union it with the circle itself, which is the boundary of this. And that gives us D1. Or the disk, uh, the two disk. I mean, that's D2, not D1. Okay. So now that we have our two disk, um, what we're going to do next is quotient it once again. So I know I did the typo in the recipe. You require two quotient topologies for this one. Okay. So we're going to quotient it out by all by identifying all points along the boundary. So two points A and B are identified if and only if A and B are inside uh, the boundary of D2, which is S1. So we're identifying all points along this circle here that enclose the disk. And that gives us S2. So there. Nice little circle. Okay, so we're not quite done yet because we're gonna, now that we're done with the formalities and the quotients and all that, um, what we're gonna do is, of course, I'm not gonna define the quotient topologies anymore. Of course, uh, this is all based on the Euclidean topology and then we just build it on from there, okay? So the definition of that is pretty straightforward. And I suggest you guys just do it on your own. Okay, so next, after we've constructed our sphere S2, what we're gonna do is perform four um, zero surgeries on it. So a zero surgery is defined to be this here. So a zero surgery. So let M be our, uh, no, I'm just gonna say S2. So let's start the zero surgery. Uh, it's defined like this. So we take the closure of our S2 without two copies of D2 and glue it along the boundary to copies of S1 with D1 cross S1. And you notice that D1 here is just homeomorphic to the closed unit interval. So that's just a line 
Well, S1, of course, is a circle. And so, you know, the Cartesian product of a unit interval with the circle produces a cylinder with a height 1. So I'm just going to denote that by CY. So, and also, S, S0 cross D2 gives us two copies of D2 because S0 is just two points. So that gives us the closure of S2 removing two copies of D2. So the disjoint union. And same thing here with this S0 cross S1. That would be two copies of a circle. And this one will just be CY, a cylinder. And you can visualize it like this. So here's our S1. And then this is our unit interval. And there would be like a bunch of copies of S1 stacked on top of each other. So this is I. All right. So now you notice that in this structure, this CY, it has two boundaries, namely S1 here, or S1 cross 0 and S1 cross 1. You can interchange them if you'd like. It doesn't matter depending on the orientation. But the point is, notice that we're gluing along two circles. So it makes sense that we're sort of gluing this onto there and getting um, a shape with a handle on it, which is homeomorphic to a torus. So now we're going to do a picture. Um, so I'm just going to write it out here that this results in T2. Okay, So we're attaching a handle on a circle. So we're taking away uh, two discs from its surface and then taking its closure, which means all points that are not on the boundary. right? Um, actually, this is called, this is closure, right? Um, uh, I mean, sorry, closure is the points with the boundary. So that's the interior. The closure now is equal to x and its boundary. So um, that's one of the many definitions, of course, but I'm going to pick the simplest one so that you guys can understand. So let's do this by a picture. So I start with my sphere, my two sphere, and then I take away two disks from it. Okay, so these are the two disks. And then when I take the closure, we're just left with this circle, but I punctured out two holes, and its new boundary is now, is now two circles, S1. And then I'm gluing a cylinder matching the two boundaries, okay? So S1 cross 0 is identified with this one circle here, and S1 cross 1 is identified with this one circle here, giving me a shape with a handle. So a circle with a handle, and that's just homeomorphic to a torus. Now next, the key is to use up your next three zero surgeries to construct a four-hole torus. So I'm just going to perform another surgery on this one here. So doing the same exact procedure, but I'm going to replace S2 with T2. Okay, And if I'm going to denote a genus N surface, so by capital G sub N, we are left with a genus 2 surface when I am done performing the surgery. So after the surgery, I would be taking away two. Um, I'll be taking away two of these again, and then attaching another handle. And then that's homeomorphic to a genus 2 surface, two hole donut. And then I'm going to perform the procedure again with this one, oops, forgot to leave the space, but to get the point, I attach a handle there, and that's homeomorphic to three-hole torus, and then I attach it again one more time, or remove another two holes here, and then I attach another handle. It's a bit messy, but you guys get the point. And then the final construction gives us something that's homeomorphic to the four old pretzel. 
Okay, so I know that we've done this more of on the picture side of things, but you can you guys can write out the procedure um, on its own without it. So to write the procedure, I guess I'm gonna start with closure s two without s not cross t two union s not cross s one oops p one cross s one and then the second sequence in here. So it's all sequence of surgeries. And we take a surgery now on T2, removing S0 cross D2, union S0 cross S1, gluing with P1 cross S1. And then it gives it a genus 2 surface, so I take the closure of G2, init S0 cross D2, gluing along S0 cross S1. And going with D1 cross S1. And then I'm going to write a dot 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 here because it would be so tedious to write out the rest of the procedure. But lastly, I'm left with the closure of G3 without S0 cross D2. Union S0 cross S1. Uh, gluing with D1 cross S1. So this is the sequence of the actual surgeries that you're going to perform after you've constructed the quotient topology. And so that leaves you with the four hole pretzel. So there, I hope you guys enjoy the recipe and have a great day.